We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Lord, this is a time. It's a season. This is the hour, a day you have made that we should rejoice and be glad in it. Nothing else we have to do but to give you praise and make the best use of this time. We give glory and honor to your holy name. Spirit divine, we invite you. Power of the Lord, we invite you. Teach us to know who we are in Christ. Teach us to know our own position in the Lord, that we as kings and queens in the kingdom we not live less than who we are. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. The general team is power for harvest, power for harvest. And today we are looking at the topic, knowing your identity in Christ. Knowing your identity in Christ. Uh, if I ask everybody in the house today that what is your identity, your position in your home, I hope you will have something to tell me. Um, what is your position in the home? Uh, some people will say, I'm the father of the house. I'm being the father, I'm the head of the home. Some will say, I am the mother of the house. Uh, some will say, I'm a child. Uh, everybody have their own identity in their homes. But when we ask, what is your identity in Christ? Um, what will be your response? Your identity. It means who you are. The exact position you are occupying in Christ Jesus. Remember, Jesus is not somebody we see. He is not the God of iron or wood. We serve him by faith. This generation, we have not seen him. Uh, even if you have seen him, it be in a revelation, not more than a revelation, not physical sight. So, who are we in him? Who are we in Christ? Let's first of all look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1, 12. 13. John 1 12. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe, he believe on his name, which we are born, not of blood, not of nor of the will of the flesh not of the will of man, but of God. If you look at this passage very well, there is something that is very, very heavy in this place. God is not a man. But here we are told that men can be given birth to by God. God is invisible. He's all powerful. But here we are told that God could, has the ability of giving birth to physical men and women. It looks confusing. I've heard some Muslims say, if God has no wife, how could he give birth? They forget to understand that even God can cause smoke to come without fire. God can cause water to come up without well or spring or anything that produces water. This birth we are talking about is not the birth of the labor room. This birth is, has nothing to do with man. The Bible says it is not of the will of man, not according to the manner of a man and a woman. 
This birth is totally different. This is about creation. This is about God bringing people who look like himself. Are angels sons of God? How did God come about having angels as his children? He has no wife, but he has children. By what? By creation. By creating them. What is our identity in Christ Jesus? Some of us just come to church and we don't know who we are. Some of us don't know who we are in Christ. It's my prayer that the Lord will open our eyes. I know of a young man some time ago who was passing through so many challenges in life, so many troubles, so many challenges. So he decided he was advised to go and consult a witch doctor, Babalawo. So he traveled from his state to Delta State here and decided to consult a witch doctor. And the witch doctor was consulting his oracle. The witch doctor told the young man, I can't see anything about you. It was this, the person that went there that told me. It's not the say, the say. He told me because God spoke. He was having so many challenges even after visiting there. The witch doctor told him, I can't see any of your information. I can't see anything about you. So working for you is difficult. The young man did not know that the whole of his information were all covered by the blood of Jesus. And the witch doctor could not see anything about him. And the witch doctor told him, Bring your two hands. He brought his palms. He took sand and poured the sand upon his hands. And then his vision opened and he started seeing things. I told him, you as a child of God went to consult a lower power. A lower power. The blood of Jesus covered your information so that when witches and wizards Go to the covens when your enemies go to Babalawo, they will not see anything about you. They will not see your future. They will not know your plans. But this time around, you have gone to the same person, the same enemy that the, that the God of heaven and earth hid your information from. Now by pouring, you were made out of sand, out of the dust of the ground. He took what you were made of and release it upon you, defy, you have just denied your God. You deny your maker and all the power, the power of God that covered you was quenched that same moment. Because you denied God, the Holy Spirit left you and your information became open for the enemy to assess. The young man was having a problem. Because the balance is supposed to have given to the Babalawo, the witch doctor. He did not give him. So he asked me, can I give, go and give the money to him? I said, give the money to who? All you just need is repay. He said, the Babalawo has called me, threatened me that I should return the money. I said, no, you don't need to return it. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become what? Have become new. Praise the Lord. A lot of times we forget who we are in Christ and we focus on what our forefathers have done. I'm not saying they don't have any effect. But me, I have one kind of belief. If I am born again, I should live my new life in Christ. I should not be traveling back to 200 years ago to begin to live and consider what my forefathers have done. They have little or no impact in my life. The Bible says... That if the fathers eat sour grape, they should not affect the children. That the soul that sinned shall do what? Shall die. Once you are in Christ, focus on Jesus Christ. If there is any foundation, break it once and for all when you are repenting. And when you are in Christ, you operate in the level of Christ. Amen? Because the moment we come to Christ, 
We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth have been given to me. As the Father sent me, so I do what? I send you. All power and authority have been given to Jesus Christ. And we have been delegated by him. Jesus is no longer on earth. He's in heaven. We have the Holy Spirit here. So we can operate at the same frequency that Jesus operated while he was on earth. Because we are representing him. If you are an ambassador of a country, anything you say, they will quote your country. That is who we are. Sometimes I used to have little misunderstanding. I never knew, some years ago, I never knew that a spokesperson of the president can be quoted as the president has spoken. So sometimes I used to see the presidency, the quotes. Presidency said, I said, President, is it every day that he talks? I never knew that even his ministers speak for him. They are his mouthpiece. They speak for him. That is who we are in Christ. Whenever we say anything, the Bible says, Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, whatsoever thing you bind on earth is bound where? Whatsoever thing you lose on earth is lose where? So, we are in the position of God in this world. We represent Christ. That is what we are in Christ. And whatsoever thing we do, Christ stamps it, provided we are led by the Holy Spirit. Once you are led by the Holy Spirit, you are in Christ. Whatsoever thing you say comes to pass. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. When God spoke to Moses the first time, Moses, go and Hit the rod. Hit the rock with your rod. Moses went and did it. Water came out, right? Water came out. The second time, at the waters of uh, Meribah, waters of Mara, Moses went, instead of speaking to the rock, he hit the rock how many times? Two times. Must God provide water for you out of this rock, out of anger? He did not obey God fully. God became angry. I asked you, I gave you a command to speak. Instead of speaking, you hit the rock. You hit the rock. Now, you will not enter the promised land. But do you know one thing I... I, I that surprised me from this passage. Water still came out. Even in the disobedience of Moses, water came out. Moses speak. He did not speak. He hit the rock. Why? He was standing in the position of God. He was, God decided to honor the name, his name upon the life of Moses. Even in the disobedience of Moses, he brought water out. Is somebody following? God decided because when people, if water hadn't come out at all, people will go and begin to talk back at God. Moses said, this, they will not understand that the mistake was from Moses. Praise the Lord. Do you know your position in Christ? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are in Christ? Some of us just come to church. One Satan is who served the devil and carried out a lot of oppression in the world of darkness was confessing and she said, some human beings, some Christians, they are like, Handkerchief. That Satan was talking to them one day and he brought handkerchief from his pocket and he squeezed it and said, This level of Christians, they are like handkerchief. 
I can squeeze them anytime I want. You know one thing I don't like? I know Vika has complained some time ago. That when you think you have members, some are not serious. When you say, we have a program, they don't come. Short service, they will not pay attention. Some will be having meetings elsewhere. Some will be eating. Some, anytime they like, they come to church. But they still carry the name of St. Andrew's Cathedral member. Me, Navika, Venerable P.O.G., now be my vicar. Our church will they pray well, well. Meanwhile, you don't participate. And sometimes when bad things happen, people will say, they say they are praying in that church. They say they pray so much in that church. People, they are performing miracles in that church. Not knowing that somebody is not following up. Is somebody following me? I'm not saying that Bad things don't happen to good and serious people. But sometimes, when you hear some kind of news, and you begin to trace and trace and trace this person, who is the person? Where does he sit? Which group does he belong? Discover that the person is just a church goer. Keep people talking. Jesus said, I know my sheep. And my sheep, they know me. I know them, and they know me. So wherever you are, where your shepherd is going, go there. So long as your shepherd is reading from the Bible through the Holy Spirit, interpreting the scripture, follow. Like the Berean Christian. Follow. Search the scripture. Know who you are. Know who you are. I've been in this church since 2011. Very rarely, I find members meeting me to ask me, Pastor, what is this passage saying? What is this? I was studying my Bible. I, can't, I don't seem to understand what this thing is saying. Only few people ask. Few ask. I know there are many men of God in this church. My experience may not be their experience. When you know who you are, you want to know more. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. How many of us know who we are and we are hungry to know more about Christ? Praise the Lord. Let's journey back to... Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Let me tell you something. 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Psalm 82 the Bible says that ye are gods, and all of you, you are sons of the Most High. And somebody will rise up and challenge, how dare you say, honorary mortal man is God? When God was creating the earth, at first there was darkness. And there was water, there was a foundation, but there was chaos. There was chaos, there was no order on earth. God spoke and things started coming to pass. Spoke, spoke, but when it came to the creation of man, the time to create man, God said, let us make man in our own Image after our own likeness. There was a formal meeting. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they were there. Okay, this man is going to be on earth to represent us. Let us first of all make him out of something that is earthly. So 
They took the dust of the ground, molded man. God molded man with his hand. He made, he made. He made man, made to make something. He molded man and did so much design. You see that the way I came out now, I don't need to put on makeup because God spent so much time on me. And I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. I'm in the image of God. I don't need to spend time. What am I making up when God has made me finally? Making up? No. I don't need it. God took his time. On the sixth day, there was no other thing that God created but man, me alone. He spent the whole of his time. He was so careful if God created the whole earth in just five days and spent only a, a whole day creating me. I think God tried for me. I don't know about you. You may not be satisfied with yourself. Some of us, we hate looking at the mirror. When we go before the mirror and look at, hey, who I even resemble self? Is it my father or my mother that I resemble? Sometimes when we see some parents who are very handsome, beautiful, they say, they say God, please, if we will come to this earth next time, put me into this family. Some of us are not satisfied with who we are. Me, I used to be ashamed. When I was still taking breast milk, uh, my mother was frying Gary. You know, Gary, eh? She was frying Gary. And then, as a baby, mistakenly, I slipped out of her hand and fell on the fry pan. And the thing bought my face. Not be today, I thought they suffer. <laughs> bought my face. I'm telling you the truth. Do you know that people used to laugh at me? And whenever I wanted to take picture, I would use this side to take picture. I forgot about this side. In primary school, people were bullying me. I asked my mother. My mother told me the story many, many times. Because the troubles were always coming. But do I need to be ashamed of who I am? Look at the lion in the jungle. Tell me any lion. Take your time. Look at the lions in the jungle. I'm not talking about the ones you have in a, a zoo. I mean real jungle. Look at them. You see scars all over them. Do the scars reduce them from becoming the king of the jungle? The scars make them who they are. So don't be ashamed of your scars. It tells the world that you are coming from a very distant journey. That where you are coming from is not today you started the journey. That you have been a soldier all your life. Praise the Lord. So God created man in his own image. God took the dust of the ground, made man. After making man, man was lifeless. Genesis 2, 7. Man was lifeless. And God gave his own life. The essence of man. The very main essence of man. The soul, the spirit. God breathed into the nursery of man. The breath of life. He did not command the wind to enter man as we have in Ezekiel chapter 37. It was not the wind. God breathed life from himself. Remember, the life that man carries is a breath. So the very life we carry, so when some hymn writer says, the body is a tent, a moving tent, don't argue. Because we, this is just a house. What you are seeing is a house. That house, this house is housing something that came from the part of God. The soul can never die. The soul does not die at all. Praise the Lord. The soul came from God. And the same word, the Hebrew word for breath is the same word for spirit. The spirit we carry came from God. Can you tell yourself, me? Speak to yourself. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. Me. Hosanna. I know who I am. I came from God. 
The very life of God lives inside of me. I will not see myself less because I know who I am. Say amen if you believe. Some people with false doctrines, they say that when you die, God, during the last judgment, the great judgment, God is going to destroy everybody that does evil. It's a lie. It is a lie. God will not destroy our souls. Do you know why? Our souls are indestructible. Um, there is one law, I think the law of the thermodynamics, that energy can never be created nor destroyed. You know that? You can't create energy. You can't destroy it. You can convert it. You can store it. You can transport it like this one from Kanji Dam. Abi, the light, many, many miles away, is here as light. You can convert it to rotate. You can convert it to heat, you can convert it to light, but you can't destroy energy. What is indestructible can never, never be destroyed in any form you, it finds itself. Jesus said, do not be afraid of man who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. But be afraid of him who can kill the body and do what? No, not kill the soul. And cast Cast your soul into hell. Not kill it. Because God cannot die. God is eternal. You are an eternal being. And you don't die. Me, I will never die. The Bible says, He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. But whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. That was when he was at the tomb of Lazarus. He who lives, you that live. If you believe, you will never see death in your life. People may conduct a barrier. But it's not a barrier. It's a crossover to the other side. Praise the Lord. Did you think Stephen died? Did you think he died? Somebody they were stoning and he was looking up to heaven. He saw Jesus Christ standing, ready to welcome him. Is that death? He didn't die. He crossed over to the other side. He slept in the Lord. He slept in the Lord. And nothing will be lost. When the Lord comes, both the body, everything, the sea, we give up their dead. Those we thought are gone, we are consumed by fire and we couldn't find any peace. Even their dust, the fire we gave them up. Nothing will be lost for the, for the believer. Some of us don't know who we are. Why is Satan not sleeping because of you? Why is he not sleeping? He does not rest because of you. Why does heaven rejoice over a single soul that repents? Why? Why did Jesus say that what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world, all the pounds in the bank, all the dollars, all the euro, all the naira, if he gains all of them and all the gold, the silver in the world, all the honest in the world, if he gets all the skyscrapers and the limousine in the world and loses his soul. That means when you place the whole world on a scale and you put a single soul on the other side of the scale, it will not stay balanced. That is who you are in Christ. Do you know your position? When some of us are passing through hard times, spiritual oppression, we run from one prophet to the other, from one babalawo to the other, from one prophetess to the other, one pastor to the other. 
The word is in your mouth. The word of faith that can save you is in your mouth. Don't you know that even when Jesus empowered people, twice he sent the disciples on a mission. Luke chapter 10. Go and preach. First, the twelve to the household of Israel. Second, the seventy or the seventy-two. To the Gentiles in general. The disciples told Jesus that we saw some persons ministering to people in your name and we stopped them. Praise the Lord. Some persons who believe in you, but they are not among us. When you were empowering us, you did not empower them. These were just people who caught the fire from afar. And they ran with the fire. Never put the fire under their pillow and compress it. But what they did, they went on in the name of Jesus. They were preaching and doing wonders. The disciples became offended. Jesus said, no, don't be offended. How much more you? Those people, they were not baptized. They, did, they had not received Holy Communion. There was no formal laying of hands. But these people, because they caught the world from a distance, they ran with it. And they were doing exploits for Jesus Christ. How much more? You and I. You can do wonders. Do not underrate who you are in Christ. There is something inside of you. Until you take time to refine your gold, you will never see the beauty in the gold. Take your time. Ask yourself, who am I in the Lord? Ask yourself. Do a little research in the word of God about yourself. Running up and down will not solve the problem in this particular generation. Have a connection. Even if you go before a man of God who has the Holy Spirit and prays for you, it's just like lighting your fire for you. If you have no enough oil to sustain the fire, or you have some little fire, but because the fire is so low and so weak, flies and incense are disturbing you, witches and wizards are oppressing you. And when you go, you have fellowship. The fire comes up. When you leave, you need to keep the lamp burning. Amen? You need to sustain that fire so that your altar does not lack fire at any time. Some of us, we go, we go for revival. When the fire is up, we go back to our former life. We quench the fire again. No matter how much you confess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, no matter how much you confess him and confess yourself as a child of the kingdom, as being in the heavenly places with Christ, the place of, of dominion and authority, if your lifestyle does not match what you are confessing, it is a lie. The devil has little respect for what we say, but he has all the respect for what we do as believers. You remember the seven songs of Sceva in Acts of the Apostle? They were saying, in the name of Jesus, Paul preaches in the name of Jesus, I have seen uh, Peter preach. In the name of Jesus, of whom I heard his story, I command you to come out. Demons, they assess people. I know a particular woman, she was possessed, she was in the church, and then because of some kind of lifestyle, she slided back, and then she, be, she became possessed. The men of God that were coming to pray for her, she would scream them at the door. Say, you, you can't come. Go back. In all the year. You can't come. You, I know where you hide your power. In fact, there was a church in that street. She told me, that church, I can't enter that church anymore. Because 
And she was describing where the pastor hid the power. By the altar. She was telling me. Demons know they hear your confession. And after hearing your confession, they quickly log into their computer within split of seconds. They check your profile. If there is no fire of God in you, if there is no don't touch written against your name, you say, hey, hey, you've come to disturb us. The demons will pounce on such one, like the seven sons of Sceva. Finally, we have been saved not to live safe lives, but on safe life. So that we can save others. And so that in our own safe life, while being saved, we will have all the victory in all our struggles. Somebody may not understand. Am I confusing somebody? We are talking about power for harvest. For as many as received him, as many that believe in his name, to them he's, he gave power to become the sons of God. After you have received that mandate, it's not for you to sit with your hands and your mind and your legs tied up and live a safe life. I'm not talking about saved. You are saved already. But you don't want to offend anybody. You just want to be on your own. Even when you see people who are going to hell, you see people who are living any hard life, it's none of your business. Just last week, I was going to, to the bank. I saw two young men. After smoking in their hand, they came out of our wall. And they sat in the same caca with me. My mind, their mouths were smelling in their hand. And I said, how do I talk to these boys? You know how their eyes normally look. And they are young. So God just dropped a little word of wisdom in my mind. As I came out, the affair. I brought out money. I gave the money to the young man. I said, both of you, I want to pay for your transport. They received the money. They started thanking me. I said, okay, I don't get you. So I told them, that place you enter, don't go there again. Give your life to Jesus Christ. I came out. One of them jumped out of the keke and told me, Sir, sir, I want to attend your church. I want to come to your church. So I told the Kekema, please stop. I took his phone number. I told him, I'm going to call you. We, sometimes we live very safe lives. We don't want to talk about Jesus to people. We don't want to uh, offend anybody because of their lifestyles. If you pray in your heart, if you have a burden in your heart for harvest, God will always give you a way out. God will always drop a word of wisdom in your heart to minister to somebody. Even a Muslim. Sometimes after buying something from a Muslim, uh, when I give them money, I say, this money I'm giving to you now. Don't take it to Moscow. Don't take this money to your mosque. I said, Jesus, Muhammad will not save you. It's Jesus that will save you. Muhammad is not God. Don't be deceived. Have I not preached? Preach the word. Wherever you find yourself. I saw a lady dressed with micro mini skirts. The thing was so disturbing. And she came wanting to enter the same uh, tricycle with me. Going to her, I said, how do I do? Eh, this one is going to make me uncomfortable. By the time I bend my neck for like 30 minutes. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So I said, no, I can minister to this one. So we entered the same keke. I asked the driver, how much? Call the price. I said, okay, uh, what do you give me? So, 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 so. He said, no. I said, okay, um, I'm going to, sister, you will pay the balance for me. She said, yes. I said, so you want to pay the balance? I will pay for your fare. And from there, are you a Christian? She said, yes. I initiated prayer. I said, by the way you look now, is it that this is how your pastor asks you to come to church? She said, no. So why are you doing? I have started. Well, by the time she came down, I said, would you draw this your skirt down? Draw it down. She drew it down and she was happy. 
Be on your feet. Know who you are. Jesus said, you shall hold scorpions and serpents. They will not hurt you. Even if you drink any deadly thing, they shall by no means touch you. Just lift up your two hands to God. Lord, we surrender every kind of self-deception to you. We surrender all our faithfulness to you. We surrender every form of stubbornness to the Spirit to you. Lord, forgive us. These words we have heard and spashate on them in our hearts. As we live here today, let us live here to go and do exploits for you. As we reconcile ourselves back to you in sincerity, let our fire keep burning in the name of Jesus. We will never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If it comes to endangering our lives, we will endanger our lives. If it comes to going to the prison, we will go to prison. When it comes to displaying your power in Christ, we will display it. Finally, Lord, help us to overcome our weaknesses so that we can rest eternally with you in heaven. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at hosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com God bless you.